Good morning, ESM. I'm Tanner. And I'm John. And today we're talking about Syracuse sports. But more on that after news and announcements. A recent fire at Destiny USA forced a complete evacuation and at the mall, and the mall just recently reopened yesterday. Yesterday, firefighters and police and ambulance crews reported to the mall after 6.35 p.m. Fire crews found heavy smoke coming from the Cheesecake Factory restaurant. Firefighters were able to gain access to the roof using a 110-foot ladder truck. It took about 45 minutes to extinguish the flames. The Fire Investigation Bureau is currently working to determine the cause of the fire. ESM Spartan News won Best Overall TV Show in the Empire State School Press Association Awards yesterday. Every year, the ESSPA acknowledges the hard work and continued efforts of high school journalism throughout the state. The students submitted their show that covered the riots at the Capitol last January. Congratulations to the ESM, stu ESM student journalists. For 33 years, Larry Deneen has been an integral part of our school com community, from building projects, major events, and the day-to-day -day running of the high school. Larry Deneen has quietly and steadfastly helped to manage it all. His calm, professional demeanor will be missed. Best of luck in your retirement. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There will be a brief meeting of the Spartan Junior Honor Society today, December 8th at 3.30 in the Small Cafe. Information and sign-ups for the food drive will be discussed. ESM's Got Talent will take place on Friday, December 10th at 8 p.m. in the High School Auditorium. The event is a Class of 2023 fundraiser. Tomorrow morning is the last day to purchase pre-sale tickets. Tickets will be sold at $5 pre-sale and $8 at the door. Don't miss out on the opportunity to support the Class of 2023 and watch your classmates perform. Are you struggling with your math homework? Math homework help is available in the library, makerspace area, the, days, the following days and blocks. On odd days, we are there blocks one and four, and on even days, blocks one and three. Come down if you have a study hall. Make sure you sign into study hall first, and then your study hall teacher can give you a green math homework help pass. We are here to help. I think I might have to stop by that math homework help. <laughs> well, today. All right, first, Mr. Avellino in an apple suit. Central Square is going to challenge us to a canned food drive? Do they know who they're messing with? We need to get to the core of this problem. And uh, never mind, that wasn't a good one. All right, let's put someone in a can suit and have them run the halls. Enough with the costumes. All right, this is a great idea. Let's do a Rocky video. I feel like that's been done a thousand times before. All right, dad puns anyone? Come on. Ooh, how about uh, get off your can and bring one in? No dad jokes. Why don't we just steal their cans? How about we try a serious approach? This holiday season, we need your help, ESM. Bring in as many cans as possible to give back to your community, not competitively. One in every eight people are food insecure. 30% are children under the age of 18. We have to feed those in need, and it doesn't take any muscle. Bring in an extra food can or cash donation, which, which goes even further. Thank you. So now we said, time to talk about some Syracuse sports. First, we're going to start off with the women's soccer team. They finished their season with a f record of 4-12-1. and 12 and 1. Their last one of the season was September 5th against New Hampshire. The leading scorers on the team were Megan Root and Pauline Mackins. They each had three goals on the season. The men's soccer team finished the season 8-8. Eight eight. Their last win of the season went against, was against Clemson on the 23rd of October. Their leading scorer was DeAndre Kerr with nine. And the men's cross-country team uh, placed 19th in the NCAA championships, posting their best finish since 2017, and finished second in the ACC championships. 
The women's cross country team finished fourth in the ACC championships, recording their best finish since 2018, and also finished 30th in the NCAA championships. And now we're going to talk about the field hockey team. They finished their season 14 and 6, and they were the 10th ranked team in the country. Uh, their season ended with a 2 to 1 loss against Maryland, who was the fifth seed in the NCAA tournament. The leading scorer on the team was Afiki von den Neuenhauf, who had 10 goals. And now, on to weather. have a high of 36 and a low of 26 degrees with some occasional snow showers. Tomorrow will be cloudy with a high of 33 degrees and a low of 29. Friday will be a bit warmer with a high of 43 and a low, and a low of 39 degrees and a 91% chance of rain this evening. Now we're going to talk about the big one, the football team. They finished their season 5-7 and seven after finishing 1-10 and ten last year. Uh, unfortunately, they will not be going to a bowl game this year. It's been three years since they went to their last bowl game, which was the Camping World Bowl. One bright spot this season was running back Sean Tucker. He had a 1,496 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. A big decision that Coach Dino Babers made was making transfer quarterback from Mississippi State, Garrick Schrader, the starter in the fourth game of the season against Liberty. Uh, it ended up working out for a few games, but as more and more games went by, it seemed like it was just not the right fit. And when the switch was made, they ended up finishing 2-6 and six with Schrader in his quarterback. What made the switch work for a few games was probably Schrader's ability to like, run the football. Uh, he finished with 781 yards and 14 touchdowns rushing. But Schrader's issue, his issue was he could not throw the ball well. He had some good throws here and there. Not really, but as more and more as the season progressed, it turned into a passing offense with a quarterback that struggled throwing. There was no other alternative because after the Clemson game, quarterback Tommy DeVito announced he'd be entering the transfer program. It was a sad, sad day. Uh, during the season, in total, 10 players had entered the transfer portal from Syracuse. During the offseason so far, a lot of coaching changes have been made as well as offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert has and others have all left the program. They finally hired a special teams coordinator. That's About good. time, Bob Lakeisha. He's coached in the NFL. And as more and more days go on, more players enter the transfer portal, like their tight end, Luke Benson. Um, and it was also announced at the, head, at the press conference that Wild Hack had a few days ago that Dino Babers will be turning as head coach next year. So much fun. It's going to be a great offseason, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And now, on to sports with Luke. Both the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets won last night. The Knicks beat the Spurs 121 to 109. The team was led by RJ Barrett with 32 points. The Nets beat the Mavs 102 to 99. The team was led by Kevin Durant with 25 points. The men's basketball team fell short of beating Villanova in the Jimmy V Classic 67 to 53. Jimmy Beheim led the team in points with 21. Last night, the boys' bowling team beat Liverpool 3 0. Ryan Buffalo had the high score of the night with 247 points. The boys' basketball team lost to Marcellus 59-48. Dylan Aver led the team with four three-pointers and 13 points overall. And Cole Tra Thomas can also contributed 10 points. The girls' basketball team won their first game last night against Carthage. The score was 54-13. Anaya Jones led the team with 19 points and Isabel Chavesty had 9 points. In upcoming games, the wrestling team has a match at Central Square at 7 p.m. And I am Luke with your sports. Uh, disappointing loss for the men last night against Villanova. Great effort, but just to come up short. Um, their season looks bright this year. They're 5-4 and four so far in the season. Their leading scorer is Buddy Bayheim with 19.1 points. Buddy Buckets. Exactly. 19.1 <laughs> points so far. Cole Swider leads the team with 6.9 6 rebounds. And Joe Girard leads the team with 4.4 assists per game. Uh, they got three transfers in the offseason, at least huge ones. Jimmy Bayheim, Jim Bayheim, and Buddy's, you know, 
they're related. Uh, Jimmy Beheim came from Cornell, Cole Swider came from Villanova, and Samir Torrance came from Marquette. This team has been picked by people in the media to be a dark horse Final Four team. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, the women's basketball team is also 5-4 and four with an upset win over Ohio State recently. Their last win was against Central Connecticut, 116-65. to There's not much expectation for this team um, since during the offseason they lost their head coach due to allegations and most of the team entered the transfer portal as well. Due to the transfer portal, it has allowed sophomore Tisha Hyman, who has stepped up to the plate so far this year. And with that being said, from everybody here at the Morning Show, have a great day.